Elon Musk has recently enlisted a formidable right-hand individual for his team at SpaceX Starbase, Texas. Kathy Luters, the most recent top human spaceflight official at NASA, and who also oversaw SpaceX's first astronaut launch in 2020. Her most important mandate at SpaceX will be getting Starship to reach orbit in Mars later. Well, what was the relationship between Luter and SpaceX like before? Why is she the trump card for Starship success? Stay tuned, and we'll find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Following her retirement from NASA, Kathy Luters may be joining the dark side of the spaceflight industry. SpaceX has reportedly hired the former head of NASA's Human Spaceflight Office in a move that could grant the company more capability and credibility ahead of its attempt to land astronauts on the moon. In her new role as general manager, Luters will report directly to Gwen Shotwell, the president and CEO of SpaceX. The hiring comes as no surprise, given SpaceX's reputation for attracting top talent in the space industry. Furthermore, Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO, has publicly expressed his immense admiration for Kathy Luters starting back in 2020. I'm a huge fan of Kathy Luters. More importantly, Luters' appointment is highly appropriate as during her time at NASA, she worked closely with SpaceX on many missions. In 2021, she was the NASA source selection official who picked SpaceX's Starship rocket for the $2.89 billion contract to use the mega rocket in landing humans on the moon for the Artemis III mission. And then again for Artemis IV in 2028, that under a separate $1.15 billion contract that was signed last year. Before that milestone, Luters was among a group of officials credited with leading the U.S. Space Agency's shift to public-private contract models, a cost-saving approach under which NASA helps fund development of private spacecraft and purchases rides for astronauts as a service instead of managing the spacecraft as the spacecraft owner. In 2014, Luters led NASA's Commercial Crew Program, a roughly $8 billion competition that spurred SpaceX and Boeing to develop privately owned to develop privately owned and operated spaceships. The initiative was designed to replace the human spaceflight capabilities the U.S. lost when the space shuttle program ended in 2011. The program bore its first fruit May 30, 2020, when SpaceX launched human passengers aboard the Crew Dragon spaceship. The mission, called Demo-2, safely delivered NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station. That crewed SpaceX launch not only marked the dawn of a new era of commercial spaceflight, it also brought NASA a step closer to realizing its ambitions to return astronauts to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. From there, NASA and Musk hope that astronauts can springboard to Mars. After the launch, she said, I'm so grateful and proud of our NASA and SpaceX team. I'd just like to acknowledge the incredible work of the people at SpaceX and NASA and everyone who created this technology, which has culminated in this incredible launch today, getting astronauts back to orbit after almost a decade, Elon Musk said. Honestly, in that period, Luters was deliberative and recognized the cultural differences between NASA and companies like SpaceX, which seek to move quickly. However, in the end, she successfully molded the disparate workforces of NASA and SpaceX into a cohesive team that culminated into a mission that's been successful to date. A major agency reorg in 2021 moved looters away from overseeing the moon program and put her in as NASA's space operation chief, and that's a post with oversight on the ISS activities. Considering the current state of SpaceX, its most important program now is Starship, which so far has undergone one fully integrated test flight that ended with an explosion. Following the rocket's disintegration in the sky, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson dismissed concerns regarding the rocket, reassuring that Starship would be capable of delivering astronauts to the surface of the moon in two years' time. However, the FAA has grounded Starship pending an ongoing investigation into its explosion, and there's looming doubt surrounding SpaceX's ability to get that giant rocket off the ground again soon. As it prepares its Starship rocket for the moon, SpaceX's Looters hire might be exactly what the company needs right now. Looters have been with NASA for more than 30 years, accumulating a heap of experience in the spaceflight field. She'll undoubtedly serve as the trusted source for spaceflight knowledge that SpaceX could use to help it gain more credibility with its government customers, including NASA. 
Her contributions could also boost the Starship program, but only time will tell. SpaceX has scouted NASA officials before, namely Luter's successor, William Gersten Mayer. He served as the agency's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations from 2005 to 2019 before joining SpaceX in 2020, according to CNBC. Gersten Mayer is now the company's Vice President of its Build and Flight Reliability Organization. Looters joining the SpaceX team, definitely an asset to the company, whether or not SpaceX will have its Starship rocket ready for liftoff to the moon in just a few years' time, well, that remains to be seen. But finally, there's another wonderful thing about this woman. She was the first woman to lead human spaceflight at NASA, a fact she said she was initially unaware of. When Jim Bridenstine asked me if I would take this role, I didn't really think about being first, she shared. I was more overwhelmed with the potential task in front of me and it was actually when I was talking to my husband that he made the point to me. At that time, Luter said she faced a number of practical challenges, including figuring out how to meet aggressive deadlines during a pandemic that had led NASA to shutter its facilities to most employees and contractors. That will be a key for accomplishing the monumental task of sending the first woman and the next man to the moon. This has got to be one of the most difficult jobs in America, but it's also going to be one of the most rewarding, Bridenstine told Looters during the press briefing. With Looters, it's like working in a candy shop. Looters did not start out with spaceflight ambitions. She earned her undergraduate degree in business at the University of New Mexico. I wanted to work on Wall Street, but then in my senior year, I wanted to switch to my roommate's major, engineering, Looters told Vogue magazine in 2017. She got married, had kids, and went back to school to do just that, earning two degrees in industrial engineering. And that helped her land her first NASA job in 1992 as a propulsion engineer at the White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. I was the second woman at the propulsion lab. I think the first one lasted about a week, she told Vogue. There, she worked on the space shuttle program, coordinating the orbital maneuvering and control systems that delivered astronauts to the space station. She led cargo resupply missions and NASA's oversight of European, Japanese, and Russian spacecraft visiting the station. After the space shuttle stopped flying, the U.S. became increasingly reliant on the expensive Russian launch systems to ferry people and cargo to and from the space station. That's why NASA developed its own alternative through the commercial crew program. In 2013, Looters became the program's acting manager at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The next year, she was appointed to spearhead the effort. Engineers love design and development and doing cool things and hard work, Looters told Vogue. And guess what? We've got it in spades. It's like working in a candy shop. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.